What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Northy33 and welcome to an ESO video. Now I haven't done one of these in a very, very long time. Now the reason why I'm doing this video is because in the streams I've been doing over the last couple of months, you guys have seen my tank um, build being out on ESO and you also see my healer class as well. But this video is going to be about my tank because a lot of people have been asking exactly what my tank setup is and the skills that I use and the champion points. So I'm just going to go straight into this. Um, this is basically a tank build that I've, killed, uh, I've called the Absorber. Um, the reason for this I'll explain in a second. Um, but this is more of a PvE off tank um, as such. It is a, it's a complete tank build, um, but it does have a resto, uh, not a resto staff, a destruction staff, um, but only to gain Magicka back on occasions. It's mainly just a stamina and absorption uh, tank build, so it's really good. Um, so, like I say, this build is best suited for players who primarily play PvE areas and is a fantastic uh, sort of build to take into veteran dungeons and all of the trials. Um, now, over time, I have played with many armor sets and monster sets, uh, but this right here is by far my favorite and can take an absolute crazy amount of damage while calling in an endless amount of shields and group effects. So the armor sets that I use are the Mark of the Prior, which can be found in Orsinium, and the Brands of Imperium, which can only be found in White Gold Tower uh, Dungeon, uh, which obviously we know can be a massive, massive uh, grind, um, but it is well worth it to go and get the set for it. Um, now the Mark of the Prior set is uh, primarily for the increase of your max health, along with bonuses for physical and spell resistance, um, which obviously is a tank you really do need. Um, but it's all about the fifth piece bonus. So if I go to the Mark of the Prior set here, um, the fifth piece bonus, as you can see, like you've got max health, physical, physical resistance, and spell resistance. Uh, the fifth piece is increase your physical and spell resistance by up to 10,500 based on your missing health. Now that is going to be incredibly handy if you are taking a lot of damage and you can't get a healer to get you some health. As soon as your health goes down to like 70 or 50%, your physical and spell resistance will be increased incredibly until you can get a heal onto yourself or the healer calls one onto you. And then the Brands of the Imperium set is primarily used for the increase of max health bonuses and then increase the amount of healing received um, which is also really good for a tank whilst you're taking a lot of damage. But the mark, the, the brands of the Imperium set, sorry, is um, all about the fifth piece bonus. So if I take you to the Imperium set, uh, brands of the Imperium, so you got uh, yeah maximum health, maximum health, four percent healing taken, and the fifth piece bonus. Like I said, this is where it's at. Um, when you take damage, you have a ten percent chance to grant you and your allies within eight meters a damage shield that absorbs 13,267 damage for six seconds and this can occur every 15 seconds. Now if you're in a dungeon, a veteran dungeon, and you can take a bit of damage and you can get a 13,000 point damage shield on all of your allies, you are going to survive a very long time. Um, obviously if you're in a trial and you have like 12 or more people with you, then you are going to be able to grant everybody within eight meters of you up to 12 people, uh, the shield as well. So, you know, you are going to last a hell of a long time. The shield also comes onto you as well. It's not just for your allies. It does also come onto you. And as a tank, you're going to have shields anyway. So, you know, another shield on top of all the shields you've got is just fantastic. Uh, as you can see then, so like I say, the Mark of the Prior set I use for the chest. I use it for the waist. I use it for the legs. And I think I then also use it for the one-handed weapon and the shield to make the five-piece set. And then the brand, uh, the mark, uh, the brands of Imperium. Sorry, I use for uh, the rest of the armor. So it'd be the legs, the waist, the rings, the necklace, everything else. Um, I also do use a monster set. Now a lot of people will either be for monster sets or be against monster sets, but I personally prefer to use them. Um, but obviously they're really good ones. So you have to take a lot of time to go and get the ones you want and will be suited for your uh, ideal build. Um, but this uh, build I use uh, Engine Guardian. Now Engine Guardian is found in Darkshade Caverns 2. And uh, obviously Darkshade Caverns 2 on Veteran is an absolute pain in the ass. not going to lie to you. <laughs> but as soon as you can do that on Veteran and get the Engine Guardian set, you are going to be set for the rest of the build. Um, like I say, basically the two-piece bonus for the monster set gives you a 10% chance to summon a Dweemer automation uh, to restore 1100 health 
stamina or magic at every half a second for six and a half seconds. If you don't have the engine guardian set, then I would advise going into the infernal guardian because that is basically a set that when you call a shield in on yourself, you then have, I think it's a 15 or 20% chance to uh, fire three mortar shells at the furthest enemy. And they do an incredible amount of damage and it's a bit of an easier one to get. Um, so I would advise monster sets on these builds. Um, so talking about skills and stuff, like I said, I will put some gameplay over the top of this video so you guys can see this tank in action. Um, but basically my main bar and the only one I really do use a lot for this build, obviously as a tank, is the first bar with the shield and the one-handed weapon. Um, so the first thing we have is Ransack, and Ransack is basically a taunt, so you press X, it costs a little bit of stamina, you jab the enemy and it taunts them for 15 seconds onto you, so it frees up uh, your DPSs and your healer from being attacked and all the attacks come onto you. So if you can run around in a group and literally smack every single enemy you can see and get them all on you for 15 seconds, it gives you a chance for the healer to just chuck heals in and your DPS to kill everybody around whilst you take the damage. Um, I then also do use Turn Undead, and this is basically something you call in, and it comes around your feet uh, in a massive circle, and as long as you're standing in the circle, uh, it grants you and your allies minor protection and minor endurance, reducing your damage taken by 8% and increasing your stamina recovery. So if you can stand in that and put it around your um, uh, allies inside a dungeon or trials, you're going to be laughing. Uh, the main shield that I do use is a Magicka shield, and this is Igneous shield. Now this is the morph. Uh, for obsidian shield uh, basically this is something that calls in some rocks around your player and it also calls it around your other players as well as long as they're quite close to you um, but it does absorb four and a half thousand damage and uh, my own damage shield absorbs 200 percent additional damage so if you can imagine calling that in a veteran dungeon you ain't going to take any damage in the slightest uh, you also gain my major mending increasing your healing done by 25 percent for 2.8 seconds so if you've taunted the enemy and you've called the shield on you as they're attacking you your health that's coming from the healer is going to be increased by 25% as well so you're not going to go anywhere <laughs> um, the next one we have is a shield weapon and this is absorb magic and this is basically a shield you can call in that absorbs 23,000 damage uh, from the next spell projectile cast on you and healing 18% of your max health um, so if any enemy attacks you whilst that shield is up you deflect it back you absorb for 23,000 damage and you get some health back um, and then while this shield is equipped you also um, Increase the amount of damage you can block by 8% and the reduce of block cost is by 8% as well, which is also really good. Um, the last one I have is Unstoppable and this is basically something that uh, increases your physical uh, resistance and major resolve and major ward um, and you can basically take no damage. It's, it's just a, a 5,000 point damage shield 15 seconds and it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, so that, like I say, this is the main bar I use and then I do use as my ultimate my ferocious leap. Um, I, obviously as a dragon knight I do have dragon abilities. So I have this, I launch an enemy, I fly in and it gives me a damage shield for 6 seconds that absorbs 120% of damage. So again, it's all about the damage shields and staying alive whilst your DPS and healers can take out the rest of the enemies around you. Um, my second bar, like I say, is a re uh, destruction staff. Now I do alternate between a uh, flame staff and an ice staff, but like I say, I hardly ever use it. It's only to get a bit of magic back when I'm feeling a little bit low, but because I have an uh, engine guardian, my magic hardly ever runs out, so it's really good. Um, so basically on this bar, I do have... I think it's mainly crowd control for this one. So I have the burning talons. So if I'm in a group and I can't get hold of everybody all at once, just press X. A load of talons come through the floor and it grabs everybody and it burns them for like 10 seconds, I think it's or four seconds. Um, I then have my only heal, which is resolving vigor. Now, the only reason why I have this one heal is because it's a very, very effective heal. It does it over five seconds and you get a hell of a lot of health back. And usually in a trial or a dungeon, your healer is the one you rely on anyway for health. Um, and obviously with the shields you can call in, you ain't going to take much damage anyway, so your health bar hardly moves. But to have resolving vigor as a last resort is very good to have. Um, I then also again have unstoppable from the last bar on this bar as well because you can never have too many shields. Um, I then have unstoppable wall of elements this will be so it depends on the staff you use as for instance like I said I'm using frost so this will put a frost sheet down on the floor and it will make enemies slow down uh, if you have a burning one it burns them in front of you and then explodes and if you have a lightning one it does exactly the same as the burning one pretty much um, so it's a very good thing to have like I said it's area of effect so if you caught the ice one in or the flame one in at the same time as talons you're going to cause a lot of damage over time um, and then get back into your tanking which is really good. I then have a spiked bone shield which is the morph of bone wall and this is something I can call in that absorbs 35% uh, 
uh, damage to my equivalent health, I think it is. And also, if there's an ally next to me, they can hit the synergy, and it makes a shield go around all four other people as well if they hit the synergy, which is, again is really good. And then the last ultimate, I do sometimes change this up between other ultimates, uh, like Dawnbreaker and uh, Werewolf, if I, do, if I do decide to go into it. But I mainly use the Destruction Staff ultimate, and in this case, it's Icy Rage. So this is literally a cataclysmic storm that goes around the target location um, and does frost damage for 7 seconds and just immobilizes all the enemies, which is fantastic. So you can never have too many shields or main attacks if you really do need to get yourself out of predicament. But like I say, the main bar I use is my one hand and shield, and that will keep you alive indefinitely.